think your vitamin B12 is fine because your doctor says it's normal. This study makes you wonder, is normal really optimal for a healthy brain as we age? This paper entitled Vitamin B12 Levels Association with Functional and Structural Biomarkers of Central Nervous System Injury in Older Adults dives into this crucial question, exploring if those in-range B12 levels truly means our brains are protected. What exactly is vitamin B12? Think of it as a super complex vitamin, even containing a rare element, cobalt. That's why it's also known as cobalamin. While B12 does a lot in our bodies, this study zeroes in on its critical role in our nervous system and brain health. Now let's look at a couple of important details of how B12 works in the body. When you get your B12 tested, the normal range usually starts around 148 picomoles per liter or 200 picograms per milliliter. You might see either of these units on your lab results. But there's a crucial detail that often gets overlooked. B12 doesn't just float around your blood on its own. It needs special helpers, two types of protein that grab onto it and carry it around. Think of them like tiny little taxis for the B12. The first of these is called transcobalamin, or HOLO-TC in this paper. This is like the active delivery service for B12. Many of your body's cells have special doors called receptors that only this taxi can unlock, allowing the B12 to get inside and do its job. The second taxi is haptocorin, or hollow HC. This one is often considered the inactive storage form. Only the liver has a receptor for this protein. So while it's carrying B12, it can't really deliver it to other parts of your body. Importantly, both of these protein types contribute to the total B12 number you see on your blood test. Typically, the active hollow TC makes up only a small portion, around 10 to 25% of all the B12 in your blood, while the storage hollow HC may make up the majority, around 70 to 80%. And this is where it gets really interesting, because this study suggests that the amount of active hollow TC seems to be more important for brain health than just the total B12 number alone. Now let's take a look at where this information comes from. The researchers use data from a study called BRANCH that stands for the Brain Aging Network for Cognitive Health. This study involved 231 healthy older adults with an average age of 71. There was a few more women than men. Importantly, the researchers took measurements from these individuals at just one point in time. Then they compared these measurements to the levels of total B12, the active hollow TC, and the storage hollow HC in their blood. Now let's talk about the first way the researchers looked at the brain function. A test called Multifocal Visual Evoked Potentials, or MFVEP for short. Think of this like a brain speed test for your vision. Participants looked at a visual pattern on a screen and the researchers measured how quickly and strongly their brain responded. The test is really good at telling us about the health of your visual system especially the protective coating around nerve fibers involved in vision. This coating is called myelin, and it helps signals travel quickly and efficiently along an axon. So a faster brain response in this test generally means healthier myelin. Based on everyone's total B12 levels, the researchers divided the participants into two equal groups one with a higher B12 and one with lower B12. The dividing line was a B12 level of 408 picomoles per liter, which was the average for the cohort. Here's a key finding. In the group with lower B12 levels, below 408, they found a clear link between the B12 level and the speed of the brain's response. The lower the B12, the slower the brain reacted in the visual test. However, in the group with the higher B12 levels, above 408, this link wasn't significant. It was like once you get above a certain B12 level, having even more doesn't seem to make your brain's visual response any faster. This suggests that maybe below that 408 mark, even though it's still within the normal range, which starts much lower at 148, lower B12 might be impacting brain function. Interestingly, the researchers also found 
that this connection between the brain speed and B12 was stronger when they looked for the active form of B12, hollow TC. This reinforces the idea we talked about earlier that the usable B12 might be more important for brain health than just the total amount in your blood. So the takeaway here is that in those with B12 levels in the lower half of the study group, but still within the official normal range, lower B12 was associated with a slower brain response in this visual processing test. We know that really low levels of B12 can cause noticeable problems with thinking and memory. But what about B12 levels that are technically normal, but on the low side? Could this still be having a subtle impact on our brain power as we age? To explore this, the researchers used five different computer-based tests that measured reaction time, essentially how quickly the participants could process information and respond. After taking into account things like age, gender, and overall health, they found a near significant trend. People with higher total B12 levels tended to have slightly faster processing speeds. However, the picture became much clearer when they specifically looked at the active form of B12, the hollow TC, and they also considered the participants' age. What they found was a stronger and statistically significant link. Lower levels of hollow TC were associated with slower thinking speed when people were older. So this suggests that even within the normal B12 range, having lower levels of the active form might subtly slow down our thinking and speed, especially with age. The researchers also wanted to see if B12 levels were linked to the actual structure of the brain, specifically the health of its wiring. This wiring is made up of something called white matter, which is like the insulation around the brain's communication cables or axons. This insulation is called myelin, and it's crucial because it helps the brain signals travel super fast and efficiently. Think of it like the plastic coating on an electrical wire. It prevents the signal from leaking out and speeds up transmissions. Doctors can use an MRI scan to look for areas where this myelin might be damaged. On these scans, damage often shows up as bright spots called white matter hyperintensities, or WMHs for short. The fewer WMHs you have, generally, the healthier the brain's wiring is considered to be. The graph here shows the relationship they found between the active form of B12, the hollow TC, on the horizontal axis and the amount of the WMH in the brain on the vertical axis. Now, the axes are a bit technical. They're using a log scale. But the key takeaway is the overall trend of the points on the graph. You can see that as the levels of hollow TC, the active B12, tend to go up, the densities of WMHs tend to go down. This significant correlation suggests that higher levels of usable B12 are associated with fewer of these markers of damage in the brain's white matter, indicating potentially better brain health and a more intact wiring. So what are the big takeaways from this research? This visual abstract from the paper summarizes it nicely. We know that the official cutoff for vitamin B12 deficiency is 148 picomoles per liter. When levels drop below this, we can see clear signs of problems, both in blood tests and neurological symptoms. However, this study suggests that even for B12 levels above this deficiency line, but below around 410 picomoles per liter, which was the midpoint of this group of healthy older adults, there might be subtle changes happening in the brain that we can detect with these specialized tests. Crucially, these subtle neurological changes seem to be more strongly linked to the levels of hollow TC, that's the active form of B12 that our bodies can actually use. Interestingly, the researchers also observed the connection between higher levels of hollow HC, the inactive storage form of B12, and some markers associated with brain degeneration, particularly a protein called tau, which is also found in Alzheimer's disease. While this finding was statistically significant, the authors point out that it's not yet clear what this means, especially since B12 is generally thought to be protective for the brain. They suggest it could be due to some other factor that they didn't measure. Overall, this study raises an important question. Is simply being above the deficiency level of B12 enough for optimal brain health as we age? 
it suggests that perhaps a higher level of the active form of B12 might be more beneficial for maintaining brain function and structure in older adults. So as we age, it certainly seems important to pay attention to our vitamin B12 levels. This study, while observational and therefore only showing associations, not direct cause and effect, suggests that even within the normal range, higher B12, particularly the active hollow TC form, may be linked to better brain health and function. The paper itself doesn't delve into how to specifically boost hollow TC over hollow HC, although some of the correlations they found were also present with total B12 levels. Looking at other research, there are some ideas circulating about potentially lowering HC, such as improving gut health and reducing inflammation, and possibly increasing hollow TC through supplementation with methylcobalamin, which is thought to be more readily converted to the active form. And if nothing else, it is a reminder that the normal range you see on your lab results is calculated based on population averages, often spanning three standard deviations from the mean. It's not necessarily the optimal level we should all be striving for. Thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.